medical ozone promoters with relation re uh, reduce synoxidative stress and pro-inflammatory cytokines in multiple sclerosis patients. <clears throat> Good afternoon, dear college. First of all, I want to thank all the people of Russia for his historical friendship with the Cuban people. In the second, uh, I want to thank to Dr. Perjagin and all the organizing committee for his kind invitation. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about um, some biochemical aspect of ozone therapy and essentially uh, are connected with the action mechanism of ozone therapy. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to uh, speak at some results that we already published in the last two months in the European Journal of Pharmacology <clears throat> with the international staff. And I, I'm going to encourage all the um, Russian scientists to publish his result in international journal. It's very important that you publish your result in international journal in order to support this therapy. I know that you have a lot of clinical and preclinical job, but we need to see more of your articles in the international journal, in English. <clears throat> the mechanism of the ozone therapy during the first uh, year that uh, ozone was used in, uh, in, empirically in clinic, nobody knows how ozone acts. But in 1998, an important paper appeared in Mediator of Inflammation. It was a paper um, that was performed essentially in Cuba with the cooperation of an Italian scientist, Bello Boschi. This uh, study established the concept of oxidative preconditioning. Oxidative preconditioning is the explanation at the level of proteomic of how ozone acts. Ozone induced the synthesis of antioxidant enzymes. But at that moment, the knowledge was, uh, uh, the evidence was only at the proteomic level. However, today we have a new important resource and we know how often at, at the genomic uh, level. And the key of the action mechanism is focused in these two nuclear factors. <coughs> the uh, previous concept of oxidative preconditioning established that after a period of induction of an oxidant stimulus with ozone, the uh, system react with the synthesis of uh, this kind of enzyme. But at this moment, nobody knows how ozone can send signals to the nucleus to get this uh, resource. In general terms, when uh, an stimulus arrives to the cells, the stimulus add with a, th a transducer, transducer inside of the cell and send a signal that when arrived to the nucleus can activate different genes that act in response to the stimulus that arrive to the cell. This is a general term what happened in any kind of stimulus. But in the case of oxidant stimulus, the transducer, the signal was transduced with this system. This is the protein keep one that repress this factor that is a nuclear factor F2 when uh, oxidant with an oxidant oxidate this uh, protein, nuclear factor can enter in the nucleus, can recognize receptor, a specific receptor electrophile response elements, and in that way it was produced the synthesis of those enzymes. This is the general mechanism. Um, <coughs> that's why someone uh, think if often do this, um, probably the mechanism was connected with this system. There was some evidence in this uh, sense about the connection between often and ENF2, but came not from the often therapy, came from the toxicology of often, because often is a, a, a pollution, and there are many, many people who study the action mechanism of ozone as a toxin. <clears throat> but in 
2030, a group of scientists from the, uh, Italia do this uh, a paper of paramount importance. He demonstrated that when ozone was in contact with serum, in those dependent, there, there is a formation of hydrogen peroxide and four hydroxy alkanals that interacting with, uh, in this case, with uh, cell in culture, can't remove this protein from the NF2, and this uh, nuclear factor can enter inside of the nucleus and can promote the synthesis of proteins. This is uh, a very, very important uh, paper in the history of ozone therapy because demonstrate in vitro that uh, in fact, the mechanism of ozone is connected with this factor. We do an additional uh, research, in this case in vivo, and we published this uh, article also in the European Journal of Pharmacology in 2014. And we demonstrate in vivo in the condition of autoemotherapy how this process happens. Here, this, there is an important result that I have not a lot of time to explain the result deeply, but you can read the, the paper. This result demonstrates that in the condition of autoemotherapy, it's allowed to put in contact 100 milliliters of blood with ozone to transmit the signal to the rest of the lymphocyte. This is one of the reasons that demonstrate that we don't need high doses of ozone. Even low doses of ozone can um, has a global effect in, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the in the whole body. But the most uh, recent paper that we do about this topic was done in Mexico with uh, 28 patients of multiple sclerosis in which uh, was treated with 20 microgram per milliliter of ozone rectally. And uh, we, we use uh, a group of uh, patient control and a group of patients with uh, multiple sclerosis. In, in this case, the patient was the patient with the type of multiple sclerosis of relaxing remitting. The biochemical result was um, the, the result that we expect in the sense that the patient treated with ozone, in the, in the patient treated with ozone, the level of antioxidant uh, enzyme was increased and the indicator of oxidative stress was reduced. This is more or less the, the regular result that we obtain in every clinical trial. But we measure also some indicator of uh, um, at the level of uh, molecular biology. And we found different interesting things. In uh, patients treated with ozone, the level of phosphorylated NR, NRF2 was increased. The level of um, uh, um, casein kinase 2 was increased. And the level of inflammatory cytokine was reduced. Schematically, we previous knew the fact that in NF2 can enter in the nucleus because the action of oxidant promoted by ozone and can promote the expression of antioxidant in, in sign. But with this uh, paper, we demonstrate that there are also an alternative way or a complementary way uh, during uh, Oxidative uh, intermediary of ozone can't release casein kinase 2 from the nucleus to the outside, and this uh, casein kinase can phosphorylate in RF2 and in that way promote the pass of this factor to the uh, inside of the nucleus. Those resort uh, the, re the relationship between the concentration of N uh, NRF2 and NF-kappa-B are uh, a focus of the research of different, of different papers. For instance, in this case, this is a preclinical uh, experiment that demonstrates that under the effect of ozone, 
the concentration of NF2 was increased and the a concentration of NF kappa B was uh, decreased. The same trend was achieved with, in this paper, in this preclinical paper that was published recently. And all this uh, data are uh, demonstrate that uh, activation of both factor has a common uh, pathway that is the production of hydrogen peroxide because of the action of ozone, but uh, there is a cross talk between those pathways and in, in the, in the um, uh, when the activation of pathway was increased, the uh, pathway of NF uh, kappa B was uh, reduced and maybe this happened uh, during uh, the treatment with ozone. The NF2 uh, pathway is very important. In the last three years, there are many people who try to find a target uh, to stimulate NF2 pathway. And ozone, we know uh, now know that ozone is uh, a drug or a, a pro drug that activate this pathway. Theoretically, any drug that can activate this pathway can be useful to treat different different diseases. That ha all diseases all these diseases has in common the oxidative stress. Something important in the case of ozone is that there are two main mechanisms of action. One mechanism that we defined in drug response in 2010 as a direct uh, mechanisms or the direct oxi oxidation promoted by ozone. But there are a second more important pathway that involve a response, name it or metic response. No more doses of ozone can produce a better response. A high doses of ozone can produce toxicity is uh, very necessary to uh, respect the protocol and the doses. The doses that established the Madrid Declaration was taken empirically from the experience of the main important school of ozone therapy and taken into consideration, of course, the experience of the Russian school of ozone therapy. Then we call every expert to respect the ranges of doses of ozone and the right protocols. This is the only way to support this therapy. Thank you very much for your attention.